Hey everybody, Stephanie McPhail. So excited to be here with you today with my friend Thomas Tadlock, author, speaker, uh, entrepreneur, and husband to my best friend since seventh grade, Dr. Brooke Goldner. So I'm excited to be able to actually introduce another from a guy perspective, because in my groups all the time, people are always asking about the guy's perspective and if there is such thing as healthy relationships, because I find that um, there's a lot of people that think that healthy relationships are not real. So instead of just talking about my husband and I, I figured, hey, we'll introduce Thomas, who is married to my best friend, so I know that he is a great man. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your background. Just, you know, what, what is it that you do um, when you're not being interviewed by me? <laughs> well, the first, the first thing is, is um, I'm a man in love with my soulmate that I've been married to for over 13 years. And... So my first, when people ask me, what do I do? Well, I'm a husband and I'm a father. And then I'm, I guess, I could say I'm a part-time entrepreneur. And um, one of the big, I mean, I have several different businesses, several different companies. I've created a lot of success over the past few years. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest, most important topics that I teach is the secret psychology of success. So it's how do you achieve everything you want in your life, including the best health, the best relationships, and uh, the, all of your financial dreams. And I'd say a good 50% of that revolves around my ability to create good, meaningful relationships. And I've been really lucky for the romantic side. Um, I, I, I nailed it the first time. I've never been divorced before. <laughs> I've only been married once. And it happens to be with my soulmate. I'd say the most important, important aspect of that I'd, I'd like to be able to discuss today with you. I think a lot of people can get a lot of insight just watching the way my wife Brooke and I interact with each other mm -hmm. and, and why we continue to have so much unbelievable undying love for each other. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's great to watch. I think when, you know, I was divorced um, from my toxic relationship and it took me some learning to figure out what healthy love was like. And I mm. remember, I actually was just telling Tom the story the other day is that I remember I was trying to download something and Tom is an expert with anything computers. So I was trying to download something and I asked him to help me. And he was explaining it to me and I wasn't figuring it out. And I was feeling really, really frustrated. And I could feel myself just get really anxious. And he was so calm. And there was a part of me that was concerned that I was letting him down, that I was making him angry, that he was going to get frustrated and yell at me. I had all of these negative feelings because unhealthy relationships were always what I was used to. And there was a lot of men in my life that would get really frustrated and angry. And so he didn't. And I remember, and you know, you didn't even realize it was a big thing to you. But I don't even remember yeah, that you incident. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, someone who had only experienced all this toxicity, it was a little bit of a reminder and it wasn't enough because I still stayed in my toxic relationship a little while longer, but it was that reminder of that I don't have to be anxious and uncomfortable in a relationship. And, you know, here it is. It's just the communication that is so important to be able to find that person that you communicate well with and that you're not um, worried and uncomfortable because I find a lot of my clients, they're worried and uncomfortable. They're, it's like they're walking on eggshells all the time in their relationship. Hmm. And like, I mean, how do you navigate differences of opinion and, you know, is there, how do you deal with just the different people, different perspectives? You're both strong individuals. I mean, they're both authors, you know, they've both experienced all these great things. How do you deal with that? Well, if we're talking about how do we deal with that as a husband and wife, mm -hmm. I mean, the most fundamental thing is to start with is to know that no matter what, I love her more than life itself, and I know she feels the same way about me. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, we, we can totally argue, we can disagree completely beyond opposite sides of the table on any issue, mm -hmm. but still know at the end of the day, we're gonna love each other, we're gonna respect each other, and that's not gonna change. No topic of discussion is gonna change our opinion of each other. And that, that's probably the most important part to really, really get down and secure. I think a lot of people, they, they're afraid to say what's on their mind or if they're afraid to fully express the way they want to express because of some fear that the other person's going to stop loving them or some stuff like that. I mean, so, I mean that, that's, got to be, that's got to be handled first. I mean, you've got to have a solid, solid confidence 
that no matter what, you guys are in it for the long run. And then that way there's no fear in um, sharing ideas, okay? We, we disagree on a lot of things. That's not what being in a healthy relationship is. It's not agreeing with everything. It's being able to share each other's ideas, see each other's standpoint, even, even if we don't see each other's standpoint, is still loving each other despite whatever the other person's opinion is. So Brooke and I, what we've got so strong from day one, we've had, from the day we met, was we've got the strongest, tightest communication of anybody we know. It, it's just, we, we can always talk to each other, we can share things with each other, even if it's like, oh my God, horrifying to the other person, it doesn't matter. We always know that in our relationship, we're in a safe place. So that, that's the first place. You gotta, you gotta have a safe place. Mm -hmm. You gotta be in a relationship where you're in a safe place, or because if you're not, I think listening or, or observing oneself and how easy it is to communicate with the other, if you feel anxious about talking to the person, you don't feel safe around them. You don't feel safe around your relationship. That's not a judgment, it's just an observation, right? So you need to go back to the fundamentals, like, okay, do I, am I supposed to be in a relationship with this person or do we need to work on some other stuff first? Because if I'm, in, if I'm feeling insecure mm -hmm. in any way about how much the other person may or may not love me, or if I might say something that's gonna change that, if that's an actual fear in my mind, mm -hmm. then I don't really have the strong relationship I may believe I have. So that needs to be, you need to kind of go back to that fundamental first. Do you guys love each other enough to know that you're gonna to stay, to, stay with each other no matter what? Well, that's the big thing, is I think a lot of people don't know what healthy love feels like. Of course. And of course, yeah. my love being loved shouldn't hurt. I mean, to me, love was always uncomfortable. and. It, so I guess there was a question that was coming up as you were talking. Are there um, like forbidden ways of communicating or forbidden things that yes. you don't do to each other? Yeah, absolutely. The same stuff that you would never do to a friend or someone that you really care about. So, you know, no name calling, uh, no insulting, no trying to hurt another person mm -hmm. just because you have an idea. I mean, Brooke and I, we, we, have a, we have a strong sense of humor against each other. So, you know, we tease and make fun, but it's for the sake of teasing and making fun, not, a, not for the sake of actually hurting. Because I've seen, there's a difference between arguing in a way where uh, someone may try to say an insult or say something in a way to actually hurt the other person or make mm -hmm. them feel bad. That's, that is against our rules. Because that's what, like a red flag. Well, think right? about it. Like, what, when, when is it okay to hurt someone you love? Yeah. When? In, in any way. In any way. When is it okay to hurt someone you love? Mm -hmm. The only thing I can, I, I can think of is, well, either you don't love that person as much as you say you do, or you've got some issues of your own that you need to deal with that you think that it's right to hurt another person. Because abuse is abuse. Yep. Doesn't matter if it comes from the mouth or if it comes from a hand. Abuse is abuse. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, that is not allowed. In, in any way. So if that happens, and you know what, let's just fix it. Sometimes it's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to say something that you don't mean or something you, you get angry and you might say something where you actually did try to hurt that person. At that point, it's time to quit the conversation and then and, 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 and cool off a little bit and it's time to apologize. Yeah. Because you, there's, again, there's never a right time to hurt the people that you love. Mm -hmm. And that's, and you know, and there's a lot of people that I hear in my group that say, well, they were angry, so they threatened me or they So therefore I have the me. right yeah. to do that. No, that's complete. Yeah. No. Nope. That's just And I don't bad. care what your background was. You know, like I hear stories too. Well, they, they had a horrible childhood or whatever. No, that yeah, yeah. still oh. is not okay to that's treat right. someone badly. That's right. And I think that another thing that I, is this limiting belief that I hear a lot of people talk about that I believed as well was relationships are hard. Can you explain that a little bit? Because I, I think that it becomes this negative feeling of, well, you have to fight for your relationship. They're so hard, they're so difficult. I know that's not the case anymore, yeah. but what have you found? Well, the relationship between Brooke and I couldn't be easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy as pie, it's effortless, it's constant bliss. Like, there's just, there's no work. And I know a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? Well, here's why, because Brooke and I, we spent years working on ourselves and we were complete whole people before we met each other. What do I mean by that? I mean that both of us were in a place where I didn't need to be married to anybody. Yeah. If I never met my soulmate ever, I was okay with that because mm -hmm. I had created so much happiness in my life. I was so satisfied with my life just being me mm -hmm. and doing my thing and, uh, and I just happened to be single at the time too. Didn't care. I had such a great relationship with my friends and my family, and uh, and I was living my dreams. I, I could die a happy man with no regrets at that point. She 
was in the same exact place in her life. Yeah. So we were two completely whole independent people that didn't need another person for any happiness or any fulfillment. So when we got together, we still didn't need each other. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we, by getting together, we enhanced each other in every possible way and didn't have a need. What I think happens is a lot of people, they don't work enough on themselves. Yeah. And I, I'm gonna say most people have some big issues that they need to work on that uh, before they can really get into a relationship and make it the most productive and blissful relationship possible. Otherwise, it is gonna be work because what's gonna happen is in relationships, some miscommunication starts happening and then each other's personal issues start to start to sh reveal itself and, and kind of shove itself into the relationship. Yeah. And then now you've got two people trying to deal with one person's problems and then vice versa. Mm -hmm. That's that's always going to be a recipe for disaster. It's always so. I mean, the people that work really hard on the on their relationship, it's not that they have to work hard on the relationship. They need to work hard on themselves. Yeah. And this is the sad part because a lot of people find when they finally do the work on themselves that the person that they chose wouldn't have been the person that they chose once they have become a full whole person. Yes. So in that case, you know, what do you do? Do you stick around because it's an honorable thing to do to stick around in a, in a relationship that you really shouldn't be in? No, man, you, you, you know, you, you just, you say this isn't going to work and you part ways mm -hmm. so the other person can go and find their happiness yeah. and then you can go find yours. Yeah.